we know that there is a lot of energy. It's very exciting, but but the energy is because of the lockdowns. It's because of the schools being shut down. I mean, you heard in the debate, she came out and she said, our schools were only locked down for three months, which is a total lie. Even uh, even just today at this rally, we had a young man who, uh, he must be in high school, probably about 16, 17 years old, and he said, I listened to her say that I was out of school for a year and a half in Ann Arbor. This is, um, it, when you have the students who are the ones that are standing up and seeing that these politicians are being dishonest, I think that's a really interesting turn because now politicians have to realize that they're not just being watched by adults, that what they're doing is being watched by kids because kids have more access to the news and, and politics than they ever have before. And so when children are watching you and they hear you say something dishonest, I mean, those, those are the folks that are gonna call you out every time, right? The kids turn around and they say, oh, this, the governor's lying. <laughs> I'm Dave Rubin and joining me today is the Republican nominee for governor of the great state of Michigan, Tudor Dixon. Tudor, welcome to the Rubin Report. And thank you for having me. Well, I'm very happy to have you on. I have to get two things off my chest before we start. Uh, number one, I don't like Gretchen Whitmer very much and I've made a lot of fun of her in the last two years or so. And then number two, I did not know much about you until about two weeks ago, after, uh, once I watched you in the debate, and I was super impressed. So for the, for the people that don't know too much of you, uh, about you outside of Michigan, uh, can we do a little, a little Tudor Dixon 101 first? Yes, absolutely. So a little bit about me. I am a mom of four daughters. So I have kids that went through with the whole school pandemic crisis and was walking alongside the other parents during that time. But I think something that most people don't know about me is that I'm a businesswoman. I come from the steel manufacturing world. My family had a steel foundry in Michigan. And so I worked on the shop floor for many years, went from the steel casting industry into the forging industry. So I had worked in heavy equipment, mining, railroad, military equipment, and then went to the automotive industry. So I learned our Michigan automotive industry. But then about five years ago, I had a friend come to me and say, I'm not sure if you know what's happening in our schools. And at that time, the concern was just this anti-American message. I mean, you know, you talk about it all the time and kind of the indoctrination that was happening in schools. So we created a media company at that time to counteract CNN 10 that's in our middle and high schools. And we started that, that expanded into working on political campaigns and then working on a, a conserv conservative network. And through that, we said, you know what, Gretchen, we started going through the pandemic, watching what Gretchen Whitmer was doing and said, who's going to take this woman out of office? We've got to take our state back. And that was kind of our we the people moment when I said, well, let's do this and see what it takes. And so far it's been an interesting ride, but we are really, we feel the support of the people in the state of Michigan. The campaign is really thriving. The momentum is there. We just had a rally. And I think about five people came up to me and said, I've never attended a political rally before, but I am just so jazzed up for this election. So we feel the momentum on the ground and it's really exciting. I think my business background was kind of unexpected from Gretchen Whitmer. She saw me as more of a political commentator mm -hmm. and I guess thought that potentially I wouldn't be able to go toe to toe with her when it comes to the debate and understand the, the private sector the way I do. And I think that was unexpected for her and I feel like we maybe had her on her heels a bit. Yeah, well, I love the story there because I think this is the theme right now with this new crop of politicians people that didn't really want to be politicians, people that were kind of doing other things, productive members of society, had families, and then ultimately uh, reality, or I suppose Democrat or progressive reality hit them in the face, and then you felt like you had to get involved. So uh, you're, on the, you're on the campaign bus right now. It looks like the polls are basically neck and neck. Like, I take it you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Right now we are we are tied in the polls. We feel very good. We feel like we have a lot of good momentum like I said on the ground. But uh, even from what we're hearing from the little that the that we can hear from the media in locally, we're being told that we're not seeing the crowds at the Whitmer events mm -hmm. that we're seeing at the Dixon event events. So we know that there is a lot of energy. It's very exciting, but, but the energy is because of the lockdowns. It's because of the schools being shut down. I mean, you heard in the debate, she came out and she said, our schools were only locked down for three months, which is a total lie. 
even uh, even just today at this rally, we had a young man who, uh, he must be in high school, probably about 16, 17 years old, and he said, I listened to her say that I was out of school for a year and a half in Ann Arbor. This is, uh, when you have the students who are the ones that are standing up and seeing that these politicians are being dishonest, I think that's a really interesting turn because now politicians have to realize that they're not just being watched by adults, that what they're doing is being watched by kids because kids have more access to the news and, and politics than they ever have before. And so when children are watching you and they hear you say something dishonest, I mean, those those are the folks that are going to call you out every time, right? The kids turn around and they say, Oh, this, the governor's lying. And that's what so many parents have come to me when I said, you know, I just heard an audible gasp across Michigan when you, when you lied about the schools being shut down for three months to me and said, that was the thing. It was our kids in the, in the family room sitting with us that had the audible gasp and said, no, that's not true. We were out for much longer than that. So it's very interesting to see this, the Democrat party kind of trying to they're flailing they're trying to figure out exactly who their base is and they seem to have lost their base yeah it was really a wild moment because she said it you immediately called her out on it i'm pretty sure i just heard an audible gasp around town when gretchen whitmer said that kids were out of school for three months perhaps she wasn't paying attention to what was actually happening even we even had schools that were closed this year this is shocking to me that she thinks that schools were only closed for three months or maybe she thinks she can convince you that schools were only closed for three months but you know better because your students are the ones that are desperately behind and the test scores show that she's being dis dishonest about this. She's being dishonest about even trying to get into these schools to get these schools back on track. Clearly, the audience didn't buy it. Anyone that's paying any attention didn't buy it. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but in the in the midst of all that, I lived in California at the time. I'm in Florida now. But even in crazy Cali with our lockdowns, I was sending seeds to people in Michigan because if you <laughs> oh, remember, yes. she, she didn't want people to garden in their own backyards. So I was literally sending seeds to people in Detroit and all over Michigan for that, but what do you make of that that concept that she can bold face lie like that? I mean, when you shake her hand, did you shake her hand after? Like, yes. like do you say to her, hey, lady, the cameras aren't on. Like, how do you do it? How do you do it? She can do it because the media comes to her rescue every time. They say, I mean, well, can we technically say that the schools were only out for three months? We, I mean, and I just blasted this guy the other day. No, you cannot because the schools were out for a year and a half. What are you talking about? How could you possibly hold the water for this politician? But they're definitely in full-blown defense of her. But what you said about the seas, it's very interesting because I think a lot of people don't understand what happened in the state of Michigan. She did. We actually had sections of our grocery stores yep. that had police tape around them saying, you can't go into this section and buy this. I had a woman yesterday who said, I have a greenhouse. We were stopped from having curbside service for Easter lilies. But she said, I said, you know, I had a guy in Grand Rapids say the same thing, but down the street, they can sell marijuana curbside. She said, yeah, I think it's the same growing process, but we were stopped. <laughs> and we actually had, they actually had notices on their door that they would be sent to jail. That's how Gretchen Whitmer operated. And another guy just stopped me. At, and this was really interesting. He said, don't ever forget. He said, I'm a surgeon and don't ever forget that every surgery was considered an elective surgery. We were shut mm -hmm. down from knee replacements, from broken ankles, everything was shut down, but the abortion clinics were open. So it was interesting how that worked. It's interesting because there's a confluence of the, the COVID stuff and then what you started with, which was you know the parental rights sort of thing. Are you finding that there's a whole bunch of new people that would not traditionally be Republicans? Because that seems to be the thing that's happening all over the country. Look, you're gonna have your base on either side, but there is this huge right. wave of, I would say, mugged liberals who are just like, enough of this. So much so, and I brought this up in the debate too, because we have a community in Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan, that has a strong Democrat base. Mm -hmm. This is a largely Muslim community. And when I was at one of our rallies, I had a father come to the rally from Dearborn. And he said, I just wanted to, we, we do these town halls where we'll let people ask us anything. And, and so he said, I just want to make a comment. I recently went to my elected officials in the Democrat Party and I said, I don't, I don't 
don't like this content that's in our schools. And he said, I was called a racist and a bigot. And he said that I had been running for a position. I had been running for elected position as a Democrat. And he said, I won't vote Democrat this year. And I'm going to tell everybody in my community that they should not vote Democrat because the Democrats will not protect protect our kids from this stuff. And I told this story at the debate and Stephen Colbert picked it up and said, this never happened. Oh, this story of this man that never existed. Well, the man was so mad. And I think this is what we're going to start seeing folks that have true concerns that your elected officials should stand up for that are being ignored mm -hmm. because they're not pushing the right propaganda. And he stood up and he said, he got really mad and he said no. And he went to the local news and he said, you know, I'm being made fun of on Stephen Colbert. And I give the local news credit for actually running his story and saying, no, he actually did stand up at her rally and say this. And that has sort of also put the whole Democrat Party on their knees because, or on their heels because they're going, uh, maybe they should be on their knees maybe <laughs> at this point, um, <laughs> on their heels saying, shoot, what are we going to do now that this guy came forward and said this really is the truth and the Democrats aren't listening to what the real issues are? But isn't that the problem across the country? They're telling us that the issues we should have are not the issues we do have. I mean, energy independence. Oh, no, no, don't worry about that. The border. No, 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 don't worry about that. Focus on these other things. No, the people know what to worry about. Right. And then, of course, it turned out that in Dearborn, Michigan, all of these Muslim parents were at the school board meetings and some videos did actually go viral of them saying, hey, enough of this indoctrination. So uh, Colbert, I always say he's just part of the machine. He just will say whatever, whatever they put out there. But speaking of the media, there was a, a really nice moment after your debate where you basically just stood there. You were surrounded by probably, I don't know, 30 reporters and they just all have the mic in your face. And you just like one at a time answering every single question. And I, the whole time I was watching it, we played some of it. I was thinking, is there any chance Whitmer did anything like that? Oh, you know, she was over there, but she actually brought in a bunch of elected officials to stand with her and help her answer the questions. So I don't know exactly what her media scrum looked like, but I know they're certainly much harder on me. They want to they want to push this narrative. They want to help her out to say, gosh, this side, they're conspiracy theorists. I'm like, this is hilarious that they're concerned about the fact that we go back and say, well, in the state of Michigan, Jocelyn Benson broke a few of the rules. Our secretary of state broke a few of the rules without talking to the legislature. A judge actually came out and said that some of the things she did in the election were unlawful. And so we, of course, get hit with that. Well, you believe that this election was unlawful. No, a, a judge believes that this election was unlawful. It's not me. But they're, they're like, oh, we've got to come up with something to make these people scary and have them vote against them. The media is literally helping them to try to create a narrative that does not exist. And so we know when we go into those media scrums that it's going to be a battle and we're just going to knock each question out and make sure that we get the questions done and move on. Do you get invites for the from mainstream like on CNN or MSNBC or any of that stuff? Oh, uh, we actually, I will say that, um, oh, maybe not. I can't remember <laughs> if it was CNN or not, but you know, in those cases, I don't think that we're going to be asked the, the fair or the nice questions at this point. I 100% know that these media outlets are there to try to get Democrats elected. Yeah. I mean, we're at the point now where we see it. They're running stories straight out of the uh, opposition research book. Like they've gotten down to the bottom and they haven't been able to knock out Republicans. So they're putting, they're going to the news and like, could you run this story? We think there might be some accuracy to it. I mean, these are just, you know, they get a wild hair and they try to run with it. It's not even true. Is there, is there any coordination between you and some of the other Republican candidates that are picking up steam right now? I mean, if you see what's going on in New York, Lee Zeldin, who nobody, I mean, basically nobody knew of outside of a small district in New York until about a month ago. Uh, you know, Carrie Lake is, seems to be on fire now in Arizona. Are you guys coordinating in any way on messaging or anything, or are you all just kind of doing your own thing? Yeah. We're all doing our own thing, but I, Carrie Lake and I have spoken um, several times. Obviously, our states are all a little bit different. Michigan is definitely a state where we are very concerned about school right now. The school system has been in a steady decline now that we've gotten through COVID and there has been no assistance, no tutoring program in place the schools are now in the bottom 10 in the nation. So for us, it's really important to talk to parents about getting schools back on track, getting our kids back on track, getting the tutoring that we 
need in the classrooms. But then overall, in general, making sure parents are involved in the schools and we go from the bottom 10 to the top 10, we cannot continue to say we're going to reelect politicians that allow us to continue to stay in the bottom 10 in the nation. And Gretchen Whitmer's been in office for 20 years. It's time to hold her accountable. Actually, it's time to just say, move on, go to the private sector, see how that works for you. Well, it'll probably make her a lot of money, but that would be better than the, the current situation. So I don't think I've been to, to Michigan. I was there probably, it's been about five years. I did a couple of shows in Grand Rapids and the crowds were absolutely awesome. But before that, I was in Detroit. I went to the GM Center over there. What's the building called? Is it GM Center or GM? That building, that's the, it's the Total Recall building. I was very excited yes. to be there. It's a very cool building. Uh, but then you, obviously if you go outside into Detroit, it's not good to say the least. What, what can actually be done? Because it's been under Democrat control for, for decades, I think, at this point. And think of the optics of this. She had Barack Obama here over the weekend. And you know, when you're bringing Barack Obama in, that means you need to get your base out. Mm -hmm. So she brought Barack Obama in and took him into Detroit. And he made fun of the fact that there was crime in the cities saying, you know, this is a, a Trump problem. Yeah, this we, played it. A we played it on problem. the show. It was unbelievable how glib he was about it. And, and think of the optics of that standing in the second most violent city in America and saying, reelect this person, continue to have Democrats running this state. It is outrageous. Well, we know that Gretchen Whitmer marched with the folks that are carrying the signs, defund the police. She said she supports the spirit of defund the police. Overall, when you continually push to defund the police and you don't honor that position, we are losing police. We There was a point in uh, maybe a little bit earlier in summer where a newspaper ran an article saying we've lost a cop a day in the city of Detroit. Wow. That's how challenging it is to get to pol get police to stay in their positions in Michigan because they don't have the support of the chief executive officer. We know how important that is. We know that we can bring that back. We're not only going to put money into our police, but we're going to make sure that th everybody in the state knows that they are supported, honored, honored and respected by the Dixon administration. Was she always so far left or, or I don't even know that it's far left, like so government must do everything all the time and will control every bit of your life? Or did this all kind of burst forth when COVID happened? No, she's always been a radical progressive. I mean, she came out, we have her on tape as a senator coming out and saying that she wants to get rid of ICE. She wants to abolish ICE very clearly. Yes, I want to abolish ICE. She also voted against a ban on partial birth abortion. So we know that where she's always stood in the same place there. And don't forget that not too far, not too far back when she was a state senator, she wanted to vote against right, for, um, right to work. And so she opened the doors of the Capitol, even though they were locked and they were trying to keep the legislators safe from, from the protesters. She opened the doors to the Capitol. In fact, there's even a story that she helped to open a side window to the Capitol and let the protesters in. And then she went on tape and, and, and in her 2018 campaign, when she was on the debate stage or, or on a, a news interview, she said, I threw open the doors of the Capitol and let the people in. I mean, this is pretty radical when you know the state police have it locked down and are trying to keep the legislators safe to open the doors and have all of these protesters come into the Capitol. So this has always been who she is. She's a radical progressive. She's also trying to shut down a pipeline in the state of Michigan. She is on board with the and the anti-American energy message. She's been trying to shut down the pipeline the entire time she's been in office. She has a lawsuit still out there. It would decimate the state of Michigan. It would kill our economy. It would raise prices to heat homes. It's a terrible, terrible situation. We have to protect the state against these radical progressive policies. Yeah, that actually was the next question I wanted to ask you because obviously with GM there and so much of the automotive industry coming from Michigan and Detroit, uh, this push from the administration against fossil fuels and all of this stuff. I mean, this is a sort of a direct assault on you guys. Oh, absolutely. And we, so we have people in the state, uh, certainly in the businesses, manufacturing, manufacturers use a lot of energy. We see that the Biden administration wants to shut down sources of energy. Gretchen Whitmer is on board with shutting down those sources of energy. So I've had multiple people come to me, whether they are folks that live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan or manufacturers all across the state who are saying to me, can you assure us that you will not have a Gavin Newsom approach, approach to energy? Because we're considering leaving the state of Michigan because we know Gretchen Whitmer wants to be the most progressive energy governor in the country. And we've already seen Gavin Newsom say he's banning gas vehicles. We are deathly afraid that that's going to happen 
happen in the state of Michigan. And I've assured people that is not how we will manage the state of Michigan. And if you want to make sure that you have the, the energy sources that we have always had and that we increase that, you have to vote for a Dixon administration. Do you know what the numbers are in terms of people fleeing Michigan? You know, you don't hear about it like Cali in New York, obviously, but I'm guessing that you must have lost a, a decent amount of people during COVID. So many that we actually lost a congressional seat. So oh, we are wow. one of the states that lost. A, yes, yes, it is significant. And when I go around the state, I have multiple businesses saying to me, hey, look, we're building new factories, but it's not going to be in Michigan. The regulatory state is a nightmare. Gretchen Whitmer's administration has ramped that up, been really tough on business across the board, not just COVID across the board. So when I talk to our businesses, they're like, sorry, but we're actually building new facilities in Texas, or we're already moving to Indiana. That's the last thing we want is to see our businesses going down to down south. We want to make sure that we are the place that they want to build, expand and stay. And I believe that we can do that. All right. So since everyone can see you're on the tour bus, where are you headed for the last couple of days? And uh, I guess go ahead and make a prediction. Why not? huh? Yeah, well, we're all over the state. So we're going to be um, spending a lot of time in the next day in the southeast part of Michigan. We're going to go back over to West Michigan. We're going to travel as much as we can to meet as many people as possible through the state. We just came from northern Michigan. So we'll be making a, another loop around. But um, honestly, I, it, it's interesting because, like I said, just the feeling on the ground, when you look at her crowds, when you look at our crowds, when you look at the social media posts, it seems like this neck and neck race is potentially going our way. There are definitely a lot of, a lot of quiet Republicans out there. We have the people that are whispering all the time, I'm voting for you, I'm voting for you. So I feel like we'll have a pretty good night on Tuesday. All right. My cards are on the table. I wish you good luck, Tudor. And uh, I hope to talk to you soon once you're, once you're governor. How about that? That sounds like a plan. Thank you. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.